You know that feeling when you are out and about, maybe you are at the grocery store or at a party, and suddenly you lock eyes with someone who looks familiar. Your heart skips a beat and your mind starts racing as you try to remember their name. You know them, there's no doubt about it, but for some reason their name is just out of reach in your mental Rolodex. Panic sets in as they start walking towards you, their face lighting up with recognition and excitement. You kind of smile back, but inside it's a full-blown crisis. Ah, We've all been there. But to go further a little bit with this metaphor, have you ever considered the feeling the sudden freeze up isn't just about forgetting someone's name. What if it's a reflection of something deeper, something that has been lurking in the shadows of our mind and of our hearts? The truth is, just like this nameless person, there are fears that we experience. We just can't name them, can't identify them. They're in the back of our minds. They're causing anxiety and stress as they smile and they wave and they recognize and they start approaching us and we have no idea who they are or where they're coming from. What if, hear me out, what if we could actually give our fears a name? What's your biggest fear? What is your biggest anxiety? What keeps you up at night. Let's give it a name. You see, when we identify what our unknowns are, we take power back from them. We can start to address them head on. Just like calling someone by their name, you now know who they are, where they're coming from, what their identity is. Naming our fears takes away their mystery and allows us to face them with confidence, with clarity. Think of it this way. It's like someone knocking on your door, but you don't know who it is. You can hear the knocking, but you're hesitant to answer because you don't know what's on the other side. It's only when you gather the courage to answer the door and recognize who's on the other side that you can start to relax. Ah, oh, it's so-and-so. Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful to see you. But not until you saw who they were. You identified them, you recognized them, and you could put an ownership to that. So when you name something, you have power over it, right? It's the same for anxieties. When we don't know what's causing our anxiety, it can be super scary, it can be overwhelming, but by giving our anxiety a name, we start to take away some of its power. It's no longer vague. It's no longer an unknown force, but something that we can now address. Just like that nameless person I mentioned earlier, there are fears that we experience but can't quite identify. They're in the back of our minds, causing us stress. Well, let's start giving our fears the name tags that they deserve and begin owning them once and for all. Now, my name is Chad Lawson, but don't let that scare you. Instead, let's calm it down in three, two, Now, really quickly, I'm going to be honest. There is no magic wand that I can wave to make all of your worries disappear. I wish, but nope, not even a wand fashioned from a unicorn horn. But what I can give you is the next best thing, a podcast episode designed to help you work through our struggles. So whether you're feeling the weight of anxiety or depression, or simply the soul-crushing reality of loneliness, I'm here for you. I am your trusty podcast host, ready to guide you through the twists and turns of the emotional roller coaster. But unfortunately, well, or fortunately, it's not all on me. I provide the map, but you've got to be the one to trek along the path. 
I've heard from so many of you that my podcast has been a source of solace and that makes my heart swell with joy. But now let's take it to the next level. Let's dig in. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's do the work. and Let's come out stronger on the other side. Naming our fears is no easy task. And for some of us, we'd rather just ignore this completely. And if that's where you are right now, that's okay. Just make sure that you're being honest with yourself. And if you really are wanting to rid yourself of these unknowns, then great, let's do it, let's go. Now, sometimes that means trying things that may not be familiar or may be unconventional. And one of those things I'm about to show you is a very simple breathing exercise called Sama Vridi, otherwise known as box breathing. But Chad, you say, I'm ready to name my fears. I'm ready to do the hard work. And you're wanting me to focus on inhales and exhales? What? I know, I know, it may sound a bit odd, but trust me on this. Samavriti is a quick and simple exercise that can help you find your inner peace and bring about this focus anywhere, anytime of the day. Now, this is important. If we want to name our fears, we have to find a way of focusing on them. And this is one of my favorite ways to do this. So to begin, I invite you either now or later to find a quiet place where you can sit or lie down comfortably. With this box breathing technique, you'll close your eyes and you'll take a deep breath in through your nose and you'll count. You'll inhale for a count of four You'll pause for a count of four. You'll exhale for a count of four. And then pause again for a count of four. You can imagine going around a four-sided box and doing this. Inhaling for a count of four, holding for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four, holding for a count of four. Repeat this cycle for a few minutes, focusing on the rhythm of your breath and the counting. If your mind begins to wonder, it's okay, be kind to it. Just gently bring it back to your breath and to the counting. Samravidi is a great exercise to use whenever you're feeling stressed or anxious or overwhelmed or just wanting to begin to focus. It can help calm your mind and find your center no matter where you are or what's going on around you. Okay, now the real work begins. The reason why I wanted to show you this technique is because it allows you to focus on naming our fears, but also, as I've mentioned, examining anxieties can potentially be overwhelming. If you begin to feel overwhelmed, come back to your breathing. Open your eyes if you need to, but come back to the counting of four sides of the box. Feel the ground underneath you. Realize that you are safe that you are on something solid, something that is supporting you. Bring your attention back to your breath if you begin to feel overwhelmed. Also, if you're concerned about recognizing your fears, which I'm right there with you, I highly suggest you do this with a friend or maybe even a professional counselor as they can hold your hand during this, both physically and metaphorically. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Close your eyes and listen up because I'm about to drop some truth bombs. Are you ready? With your eyes closed, I'm going to tell you the most important thing you're going to hear in this episode. Eyes closed. Mm, Gentle breath in. Gentle breath out. Here it is. It's totally normal to have fears. (laughs) I'm going to say that again. It's totally normal to be afraid. I know, I know, you were probably expecting something more earth-shattering, but hear me out. Fear is actually a pretty handy little emotion. It's like a built-in alarm system that helps us stay out of danger and keeps ourselves safe. The only problem is, when we don't give our fears a name, they can start to take on a life of their own. Suddenly, that little twinge of anxiety that we felt before a big presentation 
turns into a full-blown panic attack. That's why it's so important to give our fears a name, to acknowledge them, to understand them, to recognize them, just like that person at the beginning. When we name them, when we name these fears, we take away their power and we free ourselves to live in a more confident, fearless life. So let's begin. There are three steps. I hope you are writing this down or going back and taking notes. Step number one, reflect and observe. Picture this. You're sitting in a cozy armchair. You have a nice hot cup of tea in your hand and all is quiet except the sound of your own breathing. As you close your eyes and start to reflect on your life, you feel your mind begin to wonder. Memories flash by. Emotions arise, maybe some that you haven't thought of in 10, 15 years. Maybe it's something simple. Maybe it's a lump in your throat, or maybe it's a pounding in your chest. And as you begin to go through your thoughts, ask yourself, when do you feel like you're about to scream? When do you feel like you're about to implode? What is it that's getting your blood pumping faster than watching a horror movie? Is it speaking in public? Is it another bill that just landed in your post box? Or is it the idea of forever being alone? What thoughts come to mind? By being honest with yourself, you can start to see patterns in your emotions. You can begin to find out what's really making you anxious or stressed. Trust me, sometimes these answers will surprise you. But ask yourself, when do you feel the most anxious? When do you feel the most stressed? What situations, what people, where are you when these circumstances arrive or these feelings come about? Take mental notes and start to identify the patterns, the themes that may be linked to these fears. Reflect and observe. Now the second step is name your fears. Now that you have reflected on your emotions and your experiences, it's time to give your fears a name. Be specific. Be very detailed when naming them. The more precise you are, the better you can understand and face them. No more skirting around the issue. No more pretending they don't exist. They do exist. So for example, if your fear is related to social situations, try to identify whether it's public speaking, maybe it's meeting new people, or perhaps being judged by others. Write down these fears, giving them the attention and recognition they deserve. These fears don't need to own you. It's simply putting this into word and giving them a name to begin to understand why you feel the way you do when you're speaking in public or when you're meeting new people or if you feel like you're always being judged. Begin to write these down. Think of it like playing a game of Where's Waldo? (laughs) But instead, do you remember that book? But instead of searching for a striped sweater, we're searching for the things that keep us up at night. The fear of spiders? Well, that's called arachnophobia. Write it down after you search it on the internet on how to spell it. The fear of rejection? Well, write down, I'm scared of being rejected because I don't want to feel left out or because maybe you don't feel like you would add up. The fear of rejection. I'm scared of being rejected and that's okay. Or maybe it's the fear of failure. And so writing down, I'm scared of failing because I want to do my best at everything I do or because it's always what I've done. But I'm scared of failing and that's okay because I'm trying something new. Whatever it may be, get specific. Give it a name. Make it personal because only once we know what we are dealing with, and we begin to face it head on. 
And then finally, step number three, create a plan. With your fears named and recognizing them, it's now time to create a plan to face them. Break each fear down into smaller steps. These small, manageable steps that will help you feel less overwhelmed and more in control. When you have identified your fears and acknowledge them, the next step is to create a plan to confront them. This can seem daunting, don't get me wrong, but breaking down each fear into smaller, more manageable steps can make it easier to achieve. Let's say, for example, you have a fear of speaking in public. You could break it down into smaller steps, like researching and preparing a speech, and then practicing it in front of a small group of friends, and then gradually increasing the size of your audience over time. Each step you complete can help you build the confidence to make you feel more in control. Or perhaps it's the fear of being alone, you know, forever lonely. Identify the specific situations that bring up these feelings of loneliness. Why do you feel this way? Is it when you're at home by yourself? Perhaps it's when you're around other people that just don't feel connected. Or maybe it reminds you of a past relationship. Writing this down and then putting steps into place to alleviate where those moments arise or what activities bring the feeling of loneliness about. A plan of action would be to join a club or join some group that has similar interests to what you enjoy doing. This is a great way of meeting like-minded people and also just feeling like you're a part of the community. Or if you seek something smaller, more intimate, maybe speaking one-on-one with a professional counselor. This not only gives you ample time for intimate conversation, but you're also with someone that can help you work through your emotions and help you develop better coping strategies. Reflect and observe. Name your fears. Create a plan. Now, I want to close with this final thought. It can be tempting to simply avoid these uncomfortable emotions altogether. Most of us, myself included, have lived our entire lives this way. But the truth is, facing our fears takes courage, takes perseverance. It's not a one-time event. This requires patience, lots of self-reflection, and it requires friends and loved ones and support around us. Some days will be great. The sun will be shining and you will feel invincible. Other days, eh, not so much. It's okay. But with each step we take, whether it's enjoying a bowl of ice cream or going for a long run on a quiet trail, each step in our process of going through this It's a step towards conquering your fears, living a life relatively free of unnecessary fear. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And you know this, and that's a good thing. But once you face your fears, you are going to feel unstoppable. And isn't that the kind of person that you want to be? Not afraid. Name your fear. Embrace it, tackle it, write it on a name tag and slap it on its chest and say, Hey, I know who you are. You are no longer in control of my feelings. With each breath in, with each breath out, name your fear. And if you're looking for something to listen to, when doing this deep dive into breathing and name calling. I did just release a new album called Breathe Deluxe Guided Breathwork Edition. You can find it anywhere. There's a couple of guided breathwork exercises that I do on the album. And then if you're listening on Spotify, which many of you do, thank you, there's a playlist under my name called Sama Vritti, V-R-I-T-T-I. So S-A-M-A-V-R-I-T-T-I, Samarviti. 
I encourage you to check it out when you find yourself needing a moment to focus, to reflect, to find some calm, or to just simply listen and enjoy. Name your fear. Embrace it. Tackle it. It no longer has to be the unknown that it is. For more episodes, concert dates, or to send me some delicious chocolate chip cookies, visit gometdownpodcast.com. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. Now, before we part ways, I want to remind you that the views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and not intended to serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis is rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Please seek the advice of a licensed physician or therapist for any medical or emotional concerns. I'm not a licensed therapist or a physician, but I am an empath by nature, and I hope this and future podcast episodes can aid your emotional needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, visit commentdownpodcast.com. And if you enjoy this podcast and want to support the time, the person involved, and content you hear each week, please consider pitching in 2 or $3 a month. Your contribution will help keep this podcast ad-free. Visit commentdownpodcast.com, look for the white coffee cup with the heart in the center, or scan the QR code at the bottom of the page. Again, commentdownpodcast.com. Remember, be kind to your mind. And join me next week as we comment down. <laughs>